G'day ladies and gents, welcome to War Thunder with Mags. Oh, today I'm bringing you my first ever battle in the 163. Now, I bought this plane a couple of weeks ago, took it out for a couple of test drives in the custom battles using unlimited fuel loads to get a feel for how the aircraft actually flew, and then I put it in the back of my hangar to gather dust, and I, it hasn't seen daylight since. Spotted it in there today and thought, no, nah, I've got to do something about this. Let's take it into a HB and see how it goes. Now, the first thing for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, high-level jets in War Thunder, just having a look around the cockpit here, in very impressive view range, I'm not sure how well full rebuttal players would like this aircraft, seeing its, uh, its very nature isn't prone to easy flight. Uh, as I was saying, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, high-level jets in War Thunder, you might be still levelling up, don't know about them. This isn't a jet. This is a rocket plane. What's the difference? Well, jet sucks air from outside the plane, sprays it with fuel in a combustion chamber and ignites it, creating thrust. This isn't a jet. This plane carries two types of fuel on board. When these two fuels come into contact with one another in the combustion chamber of the rocket engine, it explodes creating the thrust. This means this plane develops full power at just about any altitude. It can climb incredibly fast. It is amazingly quick. It also means it only got six and a half minutes of fuel. Yeah, that's all she carries. Once that six and a half minutes are out, you're in glide mode. But you'll notice the plane is a very, or has a very large wing in comparison to the size of the fuselage. It's designed to glide back to base once its fuel reserves have been extinguished. And in fact, you're meant to run it out of fuel before you bring it back. I don't later on, and you'll see what happens. So as I'm just cruising over towards the enemy airfields, I've spotted a couple of dots, and I'm trying to pick out targets. Now I've spotted a 16, uh, sorry, a uh, F-80C that's managed to get in underneath me. I'm going in for a dive. Now this aircraft, is a, this is the first time I've ever flown in a combat mission, so it is completely stuck. There's no XP, no unlocks, nothing. An F-80C with the 163 stop will outrun the 163, and it carries along the fuel load, and that's a problem. The 16, well, the 163 will catch it, but the speed difference is so close. As you'll see, it's taken quite a while to wind this guy in. Now, a tactic used by F-80Cs against 163s, and it is very good, especially if you latch, the 163 latches on really tight, is just to run them out of fuel. Get them far enough away from their base that they can, they do not have the fuel to return, and get them low enough to the ground to, uh, to prevent them from being able to glide back and really, basically. I thought this is exactly what this guy was doing. And there we go. I've just found the uh, the speed limit on the aircraft. The about 960 kilometres an hour with a dead stop. Fully upgraded, it will go over a thousand. Now I thought that's what this guy from China he was doing. I thought he was dragging me all the way out this side of the map in an attempt to get me into a position where even if I managed to kill him, I wouldn't be able to get back to the runway. Um, I, I just wouldn't have to all the altitude to be able to do it. So I'm being very mindful. I'm watching my tail here, making sure nobody's coming up behind me, making sure I'm not getting lured into a trap, and watching my ranges off the runway. At the moment, I have about a minute and a half that I can afford to follow him for. After that, I have to turn around. So I'm down to 2 minutes and 53 seconds worth of fuel. Moving at 700 kilometers an hour is nice, and I'm only just managing to be winding in. And then he does that. As soon as I started closing on him and winding him in, he just ejected from the aircraft. He wasn't shot, nobody hit him, AA didn't get him, he had no damage. He just ejected from the plane. So just confirmed the wreck crashed and it wasn't some kind of glitch that marked him as being out. Turn around and head back to base. Now unfortunately this, even though I've got more than enough fuel to get back to base, it's burnt so much that I'm going to have to land not going to be able to burn out the fuel loads before I get back to the runway. 
Now you see I just shut the engine off and then turned it back on then. I was actually testing that feature out. When I've flown this aircraft in previous battles, or in previous um, test flights, I've always run with the unlimited fuel, so I've never actually had to land this thing before. The 163 has no landing gear, well, no conventional landing gear. Looking at it from the side there, you see how it's got sort of a little wheel at the back and a little bump just underneath its center line. Yeah, that basically has a water ski strapped to its belly and the wheel at the back is for braking. And that's all it's got. There's no supports under the wings. You've got to balance this plane as it comes in and get its speed slow enough that it doesn't tip over and rip its wings. Now that's actually the problem with bringing it in the land with fuel in the wings. Because it has two different four sources of fuel, each type of fuel sits in fuel tanks mounted in the wings to the left hand side and right hand side of the aircraft. If there's fuel in the wings, those wings are heavy and you can't stay, uh, balance the aircraft as it comes in for too long. It will eventually tip. The structure of the aircraft is also extremely light, so when it tips over, it will break. Landing this thing is dangerous, but luckily once you've got it on the ground and you're refueled, it respawns in the air. So I'm bringing it in, shut down the engine, I'm completely in glide mode here at the moment. It actually felt really slow when I was bringing it in. See, there's a landing skid dropping down. Um, until you realise you're still doing 500 kilometres an hour. It just, it seems really slow once you back it off. So I'm just trying to kill my airspeed here as I bring this in. The landing flaps are going down, bringing down the last of it. Now, the one good thing about this airfield being the size it is, is I can just put it down anywhere I like. It's all smooth grass, should be a nice easy landing, get it balanced. Touchdown. Not bad, plane's perfectly level, even got it down with fuel in the tanks. How awesome am I? First time ever landing it. A uh, little wing down, I knew that was going to happen eventually, and yep, bed. Oh. Oops. Um, just a moment. Okay, well, that was embarrassing. Back in the air again. Yeah, the problem with this aircraft, when that happens and you have fuel in the tanks and it breaks a wing, even with a fully trained crew, the repair time's about 60 seconds. So, um, yeah. note to self next time, make sure the tanks are dry. But as I said, once you've repaired, the plane is automatically respawned in the air and off you go. The reason why they don't make you take off in this aircraft is because, well, historically it didn't actually have any wheels for takeoff either mounted. That was all it had. Its takeoff was, well, as effectively, it was a 6 before trailer the plane was sat in. And as the plane ran down the runway and got lift, the trailer, in most cases, would just fall off the bottom of the plane. The few cases that didn't tended to cause the 163 to crash in a rather fiery manner. But anyways, back up into the air, looking for targets. All right, I've dicked around. I've, I've got a bit of a feel for managing the fuel in this thing now. Time to try and get a kill. So I spot this Meteor down low. Now, in a level 18 match, I can't see anything but it's a Meteor. And I'm worried it's an F4. F4s make the F80Cs look like nothing. But, fix up then, it's an F3. I'm already sort of committed to this. Try and put a couple of shells in, and that was the first time I've ever fired guns at a target. The drop rate is more than I was expecting. I was expecting guns very similar to the G6s, they're meant to be like it. The shell velocities seem to be lower. 
and the um, the drop rates seem to be higher. So, alright, the other guy got the Meteor, that's fine. Have a look at this F-80C. He's seen me uh, turn to come after him, he's running straight level. Uh, I'm, I'm not playing catch-up game again, that wasn't fun last time. So I'm just assessing my options, he's not going to turn. No, and he's still pulling away, he's fully upgraded, so he's just going to just go for it. But there is that F-80C behind me, and it looks like... Well, I don't know if it's upgraded or not. I haven't seen it at speed. He does seem to be far more interested than that guy in actually trying to dogfight. And dogfighting a 163, it's not the smartest thing you can do. Now, 109 seems to be having a little bit of an issue, so I'll turn this back around and come back and see if I can render some assistance. getting the airspeed up and you can see what I'm talking about when I'm talking um, when I said this plane just generates its thrust instantly it doesn't matter on altitude you know, 760 right after a turn no problems at all fully upgraded this thing will do a thousand or near on a thousand it's it's an insanely fast fighter but that's the cost of its low fuel or the um, the benefit that it gets at the cost of its low fuel load so dragging this F-80 in have to adjust for the shot system. It's making a good target and stuff too, so this is nice. A couple of hits, goes into a climb. I was sort of expecting that the F-80s go well in the vertical. Tap his wing again. Being very sparing with my ammunition, this only, only gets 160 shots for its 230s. Climb up. Oh, it's and there's a the kill. First kill in the first map. There's not many planes I've flown into HB for their first time and have managed to kill something out. Shots are coming through. I can't see what it is, so just go evasive. I'm about 2 minutes 50 worth of fuel, but I'm sitting between three runways that I can potentially use at this stage in time, so I'm not too concerned about that. The, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the other F-80 that's come around and taken a crack at me. I can't see it through my G-Black out here. Ah, there it is. He's the last target left alive, so keep the throttles at full. After all that manoeuvring, I'm still doing 550 kilometers an hour and accelerating away. Let's see if we can run him down. But there's another 163 on him as well, as, and a couple of other aircraft too. I'm not expecting they'll get there before he dies. Just trying to get a bit of altitude on him. I know this guy's upgraded, but it doesn't matter. The other 163 cleans him up. And that was the match, my first battle in the 163. Uh, really should have practiced fuel management before I brought this thing in and maybe took a couple of shots in it. What did I do? Well, I got one kill and came in dead last. Now, first place was an interesting one. Three kills and the pilot of that aircraft was flying a 162. Very competitive within the right hands in a level 18 battle. So my result was 26,515 silver lions, 41,300 XP for my first ever outing with premium doubled. And that's the 163. I think with a bit of practice, I'm really, really going to enjoy this aircraft. I'm looking forward to seeing how it does in my hands with full upgrades. It's probably going to take a while for me to get it fully upgraded. I'm very, very, very close to hitting 19 and unlocking the 262. And my plan is to line up the 262 and the 163, so I have a level 19 and a level 18 aircraft, and go into arcade in order to get the unlocks, rather than trying to grind historical battles, as I am with the F-80C at the moment. Still, good stuff to look forward to. Anyways, I'm going to call this one here. If you like this pretty video, please click like if subscribe if you want to see more fly smart fly safe and i'll catch you in the skies